So in this lecture, I want to go through uh, a bonding interaction between uh, transition metals and their ligands, and this is called ligand back bonding. This accounts for um, pi complexes providing two electrons. So, um, you know, we have we have like ligands, L equals ligand, and then we have the transition metal interacting with the ligand by way of a monovalent interaction. In a monovalent interaction, it kind of makes sense. We have a lone pair of electrons from um, a negatively charged uh, species, usually negatively charged, that just bonds with the transition metal, head-to-head -head overlap, that sort of thing, formation of a sigma bond, the orbitals get a little awkward because they're d orbitals, but um, yeah, so we have that. We can even have divalent where we have two bonds to the transition metal. A Lewis base is quite similar. Again, we just don't worry about formal charge, and so it's just aligned to a transition metal. But I would argue that the, the one that I had um, trouble wrapping my head around was the pi complex. So how do pi complexes work? This has to do with this concept of ligand backbonding. So what we can do is um, we can show backbonding uh, between a transition metal d orbital and the pi antibonding orbital of the pi system. So this is the answer to the question where how do um, pi complexes work. Back bonding between a transition metal d orbital and the pi orbital, the, the pi antibonding orbital from a pi system. Okay, a lot of words. Words aren't always so helpful here. Let's draw some pictures. So let's consider the um, dxy orbital. So I'm going to show transition metal. The dxy orbital is kind of like some lobes that are moving diagonally and away from the transition metal. They're probably more lobey. I should, I should draw them a little bit more lobey, if that's even a word. A better artist would have those all the same. I guess this one in the upper left, or excuse me, upper right is the one that's struggling the most. Okay. So what we need to do is shade these things appropriately. Quantum mechanics says that we're going to have nodes slicing through horizontally and vertically. So we have kind of alternating colors this way. Now what we do is we consider our CC double bonded series, but we're going to look at its anti-bonding orbitals. Okay, so this is the um, pi anti-bonding orbital of an alkene. So pi antibonding orbital. And where did I get that pi antibonding orbital? Well, you might remember that with an alkene, we can have two orbitals. We can have a bonding and an antibonding. In a bonding orbital, the colors match up. In an antibonding orbital, the colors don't match up. And we have a node. Just about to talk about this in organic two. So this one was pi two. This is pi one. Pi one was a bonding molecular orbital. Pi two was an anti-bonding molecular orbital. And so we're considering pi two here. You can kind of see the lobe if you need to right across there. Now over here we have d x y and its coloring scheme. And I oriented these so that we could take the 
dark lobes and overlap them and the light lobes and overlap them. So I would call that orbital overlap. And the orbital overlap allows us to share electrons and we can make a bond. This is not an, a usual head-to-head -head overlap. This is instead a pi complex overlap. So we call the pi complex interacting um, interaction. Okay, so why do we call this a backbonding interaction? This is called backbonding because as the Lewis base, which has pi electrons, bonds to the transition metal, electrons from the transition metal. So as the, let me, let me just recap. So it's called back bonding because what we're doing is we're taking the Lewis base, which is the, the pi electron system. Um, as it bonds to the transition metal, electrons from the transition metal go back. So it's back bonding, it's going backwards and bonding with, you know, I don't like Lewis base, so I'm gonna call it ligand. That's just better. I don't know why my notes say Lewis base. I mean, I know it's a Lewis base overall, but it's not the typical Lewis base and we might just get confused because we're focusing on pi complexes here. Okay. So it's the ligand, the pi electrons from the ligand that are what's bonding. Now, what's important about this is that since the electrons are moving from the transition metal back into the ligand system, it's critical that the transition metal has d electrons to work with. The transition metal must have two d electrons to donate back into the ligand. That's why we do our D electron count. If we don't have any D electrons, which is possible in the early transition metals or the first few transition metals we bump into, if we don't have any D electrons because of our oxidation state and where we're positioned in the periodic table, we can't undergo back bonding. Okay, that's kind of an important um, feature of this. So for example, titanium plus four, titanium plus four, well, that has zero d electrons in our d electron count which is our group number minus our oxidation state right so if we're group number four and we subtract a charge of four or an oxidation state of four and just the single element we're not going to have any electrons so no back bonding to ligands because we don't have any electrons to give to these ligands and that's why you don't see very many pi complexes with titanium. That's why it was kind of weird that we saw that one, the titanium of negative, that titanium complex from before. We'll have to think on that a little bit more because we have the two CP, the two pi uh, complexes from the CP ligands. Okay. Sometimes what you can do is you can try to depict back bonding in different ways. I don't think it works. Depicting back bonding, we could show our transition metal having a perpendicular line to a pi system. That smiley face is just my opinion. Alternatively, we could show the transition metal simultaneously forming what appears to be a monovalent interaction to each of the carbon atoms that were once double bonded. I'll just speak my opinion about this again, but we have two monovalent interactions, right? So it gets up to two in the neutral counting method, but not the oxidation state method. Ugh. Okay, this is a cool molecule though, if you can take advantage of it, it's called a metallocyclopropane. And one thing I hadn't talked about was you could show a transition metal doing two back bonding interactions to a diene. Remember, 
help me, I'm dying. It's always a funny joke. Okay, so we could show this forming a metallocyclopentene where the transition metal is inside a cyclopentene ring. That allows us to kind of, another way of showcasing the back bonding. Back bonding can also occur in another type of bond complex, which is a sigma complex. Sigma complexes will kick us off for the first few reactions that we do. That is, if you take palladium zero and react it with H2, which I'm going to show is drawn this way, you can form a sigma complex. The sigma complex looks like this. Now that's an important first step into the palladium catalyzed hydrogenation because we could do back bonding from this complex to give rise to this species. But I don't like it. I don't like trying to just depict it a different way. This is showing a reaction. We would actually call this an oxidative addition process. And if we're gonna go that far, let's go ahead and start talking about some reactions instead of depicting and counting electrons around these transition metal complexes. So, that will be the um, that will be the case uh, going forward is looking at actual reactions of transition metal complexes, which very exciting. Okay, all right. So we'll see you next time, everybody. That'll do it for this lecture.